information I'd like to share with you. Um, I'd like to give you an update, give you an operational update, tell you a little bit about some of the uh, developments from, from our perspective. Um, as we've said all along, our response here is, is dedicated to sinkhole containment, thermal stability, and gas mapping and venting. In our opinion, the gas mapping and the venting is the highest priority. Now, I know that there's a lot of uncertainty about CPT testing, but it is absolutely critical for us to get the gas mitigated. It is our way to simply go in and test multiple sites where we can finish our characterization of the MRAA aquifer and any gas bearing zones that are in the clay member above the aquifer. So then we can be way more effective at going in and, and producing observation and relief wells and getting the gas out of the ground. What we were doing before was kind of a random just jump in and get after it type approach. The CPTs are minimizing the uncertainty. And it's going to enable us to be, to be a heck of a lot more strategic and I think a lot more effective at getting the gas out of the ground. Okay? So we will certainly cease to operate in Bayou Corn. I understand that this morning there was a, a probe uh, in one of the streets that was observed bubbling. Uh, John sent us an email and alerted us to it. We sent folks over and looked at it. And indeed, it was bubbling. We, we thought that originally that it wasn't a CPT. There were actually two in close proximity. The, uh, the one that we perceived to be ours was the one that was not leaking. So we were quick to conclude that it's not us. Well, we found out later it was us. There, there are two CPT orbitals there. One of them was bubbling this morning. I think it may have had a lot to do with the rain last night. It may be because the cement that was used to plug the hole had not set up completely, but I can assure you that when I went by the site at 2 o'clock today, I've got a photograph of it. It was not bubbling, okay? But at John's request, we will shut down, and we will wait a uh, week, two weeks, three weeks, however long it takes for the BRC to come back and let us resume, uh, resume operations. But I can tell you folks, the quickest way to get this behind us is to get the gas out of the ground. And it's in your interest and our interest to do that as quickly as we can. And so we need your cooperation. Uh, I understand there's a lot of uncertainty. If you have any questions about the process, we've got folks here tonight that can, that can answer those questions. I have a question about CPT. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was told by one of your people, I just soon not give his name, but I will if you insist, I was told that when they grounded after making a penetration for CPT, that the ground would consist of 95% Portland cement and 5% bentonite. And the bentonite was in there because of its tendency to expand in the presence of water and to help seal the hole. Now, anecdotal conversation with the crews have verified that there is no bentonite involved. Now, I got no idea whether there needs to be 5% bentonite or whether there needs to be 50% bentonite. But if a responsible Texas brine person is telling me it's supposed to be in there, and the crew is telling me that they're only putting pure Portland cement, <coughs> in the hole and when I can look at it and only bags lying around say Portland cement, then I have to conclude there's a disconnect there. Do you have any idea what the right answer is? I cannot speak to that specifically. I do not even know the exact chemistry of the, of the grout that's used for the abandonment. I know it's predominantly cement. Uh, and folks, I will tell you that we've installed 42 of these. And to my knowledge, this is the only one that's leaked. I'd say that's a pretty good record. Well, that's debatable. I, I, I agree. It shouldn't leak at all. We're going to do things. We're going to do things to, to make that problem go away. But we've got 41 of them right. And, and every well, one of them that we put in the ground is helping us why, bring this to an end. Why did your responsible party tell me that the mix was supposed to include bentonite and there is apparently none being used. I can't answer that. I'd like an answer. I'm not going to make an answer up. Uh, I understand, but you, I think you understand what I'm saying. I'd like. Actually, to actually sir, Bob, I don't. I don't know that 
5% bit nine is any different than 2% in a cement slurry? I think you need to find out the answer and give it back to us. I think you need better Is that a reasonable request? I'd like to finish my presentation for me. And I encourage questions, honestly. You don't have answers? I'll answer the questions I can, man. Mark Cartwright, got a couple in the back. Yes. Are, are very unique. They're not very common. Um, these rigs have come from remote locations. Uh, we have had a problem or two with one that resulted in some spills, some on our, our own property. And I can assure you that when that occurs, we do everything we can as quickly as we can to clean it up. If you notice today, the rig that was operating across from the command center had a Bisqueen liner set underneath it. <coughs> So in the future, anything that drips off that rig, we can capture and contain. Yeah, I know it's that. Mm -hmm. it just seems like this equipment is just I understand your point, and I'll remind you that Warren Buffett used to drive a 1978 pickup truck. That was a beater. And he's... Well, I'm, I'm countering your point. Just because there was a, a, a leak on a rig doesn't mean that they don't know what they're doing. It's a mechanical device, and there are problems with mechanical devices. Mr. Right. One of these rigs was uh, down in South Dakota on July 2nd or 3rd, I believe. They punched a hole in the ground, and it, it picked up enough for the weekend. They didn't seem in the hole. The hole was still there. I took video of it. I lit a match to see if it had any scans in it. It didn't. The match didn't quite like just put it this Good way. Good thing. That's one profession. Okay. See, people need you. When you, when you went by the highway, you see the spread of this wing, where people could see flying down the highway. In our neighborhood, they're not doing that. You're making a mess of our neighborhood. You expect well to put in back there. You're leaving the mud bats back there. It's like trash. The ones you put in by the highway, you got nice, pretty fences on it. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Lander is, is demanding that from you. We demanded that from y'all, too. Get the contractors off their butts and show us a little respect, okay? It's been a year. Not, the only time I see you is over here. Come by come my house, knock on the door, I'm there. I evacuated a little while, but I'm back in there. I can't stand it anyway except by a car. I want you. Just do it, everything you can do, and have your company do everything you can do to rectify this situation, okay? Can you please help us? And you got people in this audience that are handicapped and need to get out of there, and they don't have the wherewithal on the, on the, on the, the at 875 that you're forced to pass, as you hear, we hear every day in the newspaper from your, from Mr. Sonny Crane. That was put in effect back 1980, when y'all signed the permit, is totally inadequate for anybody today to live in a motel and serve a family, a family of four. I wish y'all would quit, just quit saying that, okay? You're making it sound like there's nothing but greedy people. We're not. We want to move back in our house. We want to be proud to bring our grandchildren back here. We want to live our normal life like it was. We're not your enemies, okay? Don't treat us like enemies. Treat us like fellow members of your community, okay? Please help us. That's a passionate plea, and I, I totally get it. I totally get it. There have been a lot of lives that have been turned upside down in all of this. And we're absolutely committed to, to getting this resolved. 
and bringing it to an end. I, I know you can't see it. I know you can't see it, but let me offer let me offer a, a perspective. What have you heard tonight? Who have you heard from tonight? We've heard a lot of technical stuff. So you know what's what taking place. Have you had an opportunity? Well and good. No, this this is the 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 test that they perceive that the, the damage that has been done. It's not doing anything for the property owners and the people that are out of their homes. Two months ago, that gentleman right there said we're going to start to buy out. He said, I know I've heard y'all say that y'all are not going to, we're not going to treat y'all fairly. It's been two months and will one person in this room stand up that has gotten their money for their life or their house? Would they please stand up? There, there's nobody standing up. That was two months ago that man made that announcement to us. He said, we're going to treat you fairly. He said, I know you don't believe me, but he said, just wait till the first people get their money. And he said, and see if we're not treating you fairly. We're dying. We're taking our lives away from us, and we just don't know where to go or what to do. You have our hands tied. We can't go anywhere. Brad is, Brad is going to come up at the completion of our remarks, and he will give you uh, an update. Um, we're, we're very pleased. We're more than pleased with the fact that we've accomplished about 60 settlements or 60 percent. But where are they? Tell, show, ask one person to stand up and say that well, they what, got I think what you're, I think what you're asking for is who has received cash. Right. And, and our, that was as, two months ago. As, as, he made that statement. Right. Well, he won't look at it now in the face. Two months ago. These mediations are a joke. They are. They really are. It's been a year for us. A year. I know you can't understand because you're not out of your house. You haven't had your life turned upside down. You don't know what it feels like. And we all feel this frustration. We're just tired of it. I understand. Are you not in your home? I am not. I haven't been Are your neighbors in your in their homes? No. I haven't been in my home for one year. My home is deteriorating before my eyes. What does that matter? Can you hold it up? You're in your home. Right, I'm in my home. And do you? I want to get out. Do you feel unsafe in your home? Yeah, I feel unsafe. But you're still there. That's down for I'm not saying it's safe. Are you saying it is safe? Are you saying it's safe? Are you no, no one has no one has ever given me the opportunity to. Why are we to, with the monitor? I'm, I'm here. So all of these people are wrong. I'll have to no, I'm not. I'm not saying wrong. I'm not saying you disagree with them. I'm saying that there are a, a, there's a large percentage of the residents of Money Corn who are still in their homes and don't Lord, feel. I think you're wrong. How many are still in their homes? Do you know? You think that's a large percentage? Yeah, deal with us. Deal with us. And we and we are. We are dealing with that. But ma'am, it takes time. You you've purchased homes, you've done real estate transactions, it takes time. We can't just write a check every time we sell it. Right, because we had some folks down the road from us a few years